Hi everyone, this is CSC 107. I'm Mihir Bellari, Introduction to Modern Cryptography. And today is an introduction to the introduction. I'd like to try to give you some glimpse of what constitutes this area, what makes it so fascinating and impactful at the same time. Over the years, I've often begun with this question, did you use any cryptography today? And when I asked it many years ago, the answer would mostly have been a kind of um, blank stare from people who didn't know anything about such usage. But I think by now most people would realize that even if you're simply watching this lecture, you're using cryptography. It's a very common tool in our modern communications landscape. Uh, we can, for example, look at this, which is simply the Canvas module for our course. And if you look at the top, you see this little lock. And if you click on the lock, it'll tell you your connection is secure. And it'll show you various things about it. It'll show you something called a certificate. And you see various details about it. All this is an indication that we are using what's called the TLS or uh, protocol. And its purpose is to secure communications between client and servers um, across the internet. Often that's shown by HTTPS, the S at the end for replacing the usual plain HTTP. Here you see it for Amazon. When you check out, the TLS protocol is used to make sure that your credit card number is secured in transmission and uh, is not available to anyone um, eavesdropping on your connection. But by now, as we see, it's pretty much a default. Um, it's used in um, internet shopping, banking, movies, and any of the common tools you have, like Facebook, and here, for example, is Netflix. And you can see, again, the little lock up here saying the connection is secure in the same way. You can look at their certificate and so forth. And as we go across the course, we'll learn what these certificates are and we'll learn about all the cryptography that underlies TLS. And it'll actually take us a fair amount of time to even get through uh, the various elements that make up TLS. Another nice example is secure messaging apps. If you use a native uh, messaging app on your phone, you may not have privacy, but there's a surge nowadays of uh, messaging apps that encrypt end-to-end -end so that the information you're sending across is visible only to you and your communication partner. And this includes things like WhatsApp, Signal, even iMessage if you're talking between two Apple devices um, and many others. These grew particularly in popularity after the Snowden revelations about the um, widespread wiretapping being undertaken by various uh, uh, national agencies and uh, use them. These are very uh, important tools to preserve something which we perhaps give uh, too little importance, which is our privacy. Here's what Signal looks like. You can go here and download it to, to your phone and from there you can um, also set up an app on your computer and um, many of us use this quite routinely for for communications. There's many many other uses of cryptography it would be difficult to get through all of them but every time you use an ATM machine you're using cryptography the well-known Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency is founded on cryptography. When you browse the internet you could use something like Chrome or Firefox or, or Mozilla, Safari, but you could also use an anonymous browser like Tor, which makes sure that your location and is, is, is hidden. Uh, there was an estimate in a research paper that over 11,000 Android apps use some form of cryptography, but also over 10,000 actually get it wrong, which is one of the reasons we're going to be studying it. How do you avoid things like that? So what's cryptography about? Well, at the most basic level, it's about enabling communication over an untrusted medium. 
So you have um, Alice, a sender, and Bob, a receiver, and there's communicating across some medium like the internet. And they presume that there's an adversary there who is capable of doing various things to the flows they send across, and they want to nonetheless be able to um, communicate. Think of an adversary as somehow a combination of human and computing ingenuity. So it's uh, someone who has a lot of computing resources, but is also powered with imagination and clever algorithms. And there are two more of the most basic goals. The first is privacy, which means that the contents of what you send should not be visible to the adversary. If you send a message um, with certain information and data inside, the adversary shouldn't learn any more about what you're saying than if, it, you're, if she had just seen a glob. Integrity or authenticity ensures that when Bob gets a message that pertains to come from someone called Alice, then it really does. He, he's assured that Alice sent it, not someone else, and that what Alice sent wasn't modified along the way. Cryptography nowadays has many, many other goals, but these two remain basic and in fact um, account for a large fraction of the usage and applications and will spend a lot of time on those two goals. It's quite easy to give examples or see why these properties would be important in communication, but here's a specific one. Nowadays there's a lot of interest in um, the protection of medical data. It's uh, considered privacy sensitive and um, also its integrity is important. So you could imagine that once medical data goes online, a medical service provider like a doctor who is expecting to meet today a patient, Alice, and perform a diagnosis can go to a database and say, please give me Alice's record. And the database has stored there a file which contains Alice's medical record and will ship that back to the doctor. The doctor would read this file and use that information in his or her diagnosis and possibly add information to it so that the file gets modified and then maybe send it back to the database and say please uh, write this back as Alice's file. So that's how things would go if security wasn't a concern but um, in the presence of um, adversaries and um, entities that want to compromise security in some way there are various concerns we might have. A privacy concern here would be that the content of Alice's file is not something we want anybody to see. It contains confidential information. Uh, you want to uh, sometimes ensure that um, employers, for example, uh, prospective employers don't learn if Alice has a certain kind of precondition. Um, for many other reasons, people consider medical data to be quite sensitive. So that's um, um, where privacy enters. Integrity and authenticity would enter when you consider, for example, who is authorized to get the file. The doctor is authorized to get it, but maybe not someone else. You also want to ensure that when the doctor gets the file, he or she wants to be sure that it wasn't modified in transit. If someone could change information in there, it could be fatal. They could erase that Alice has a certain allergy to a certain medication, for example, or um, uh, just change the medical history or something like that. Similarly, on the way back, you want to make sure that the file wasn't modified. And so all of these concerns would be captured by, by the kind of goals we're talking about.